This is the gear I carry when I go snowmobiling in the backcountry, when I snowmobile an avalanche terrain. And uh, one of the key things to remember is none of your essential gear should be on the sled. It should all be in a backpack. And the reason being is if you get separated from the sled or if the sled gets buried, I have all my rescue and survival gear right here. What we always carry with us is a beacon, okay? Digital three antenna beacons are the way to go. Uh, greater range, easier to use. You can teach a four-year-old how to use this and then remember, there's only one button. Always carry spare batteries. Then you always want a shovel. Metal is the only way to go. The weak spot on most shovels is where the shaft attaches to the blade. Some shovels have a neck sticking out. If the shaft goes in this far, it tends to flex. You tend to get stress fractures. The better designs have the shaft going into to the blade. The best designs have the shaft going into a welded tube within the blade. This is about the minimum size blade I want to use. If someone's buried three feet down, which is about the average burial depth, you need to move 1,500 to 2,000 pounds of avalanche debris, snow. Um, if it's very dense snow, we chop this way and then we cut this way. With a weaker shovel, you don't want to put it in and pry towards you. You'll break those shovels. Spend your money, get a good shovel first. One where the shaft goes into a welded tube. Okay. Plastic does not work very well. The reason being is if you're shoveling into hard snow, it tends to deflect. With this shovel, if I need to spend the night out, I can put snow on it and melt it over a fire so I have drinking water. Next thing I carry with me, is an avalanche probe. This one's carbon fiber, 260 centimeters long, okay? Uh, Self-tensioning, I can throw it out, pull on the end, it's right together. This one's carbon fiber, it flexes a little bit, 260 centimeters long, that's eight feet, six inches. Um, most people buy a probe that's too short. You need to effectively probe down six feet. And the reason being is, um, if they're buried deeper than six feet, unfortunately, chances are they were not going to survive. If you only have a probe that's seven feet long, every time you probe, you have to bend over. It gets very tiring. This one's eight feet, six inches long. Um, I can stand upright as I probe. Other things I carry with me, food and water. If you stay fed and hydrated, you stay much warmer. I have a first aid kit, survival kit. These are by, by Adventure Medical Kits. Very lightweight kit, everything's in one bag. If I see this in my pack, I know I have everything I need. Survival kit, uh, whistle, everything to survive the night out. I also carry a bivy sack, which this is like a, about the size of a sleeping bag, but it's more of a tent-like material, space blanket type material. If someone gets injured, what they can do is get in this and it keeps the heat in. If you need to spend the night out, the trick is get in this and it helps retain the heat. One of the key things is people think, well, I can just get in this on top of the snow. It's not true. You need to have a layer between you and the snow. Get in airspace because if you have direct contact with the snow, you can freeze body parts. A couple of things you can do. If someone gets injured, you can take a couple of backpacks, put them right down the snow, and place the person on top of that. You can also get some tree boughs, break those, put them about six to eight inches deep, put the person on top of that. Many snowmobile seats will come off very easily. Take it right off, and you can have the person, the injured person, be right on that. I have a CPR mask. Another thing I have is flagging. Orange surveyor's tape. Uh, if you had to spend the night out, one of the things you do to survive, if it was super cold and windy, uh, what I would do is I would go into the thick trees. Okay, get out of the wind increases my chances of survival. But once I'm in the thick trees, it's very hard to find me. One of the things you can do is before you go into the trees, what rescuers do is they usually go along the perimeter of the, the meadows looking for tracks. What I can do is Take this orange surveyor's tape, tie it to one tree at about eye level, and weave it from tree to tree for as long as I can, okay? That way, it's a very unnatural object. They can see this, and it really stands out. 
plenty of power bars, cliff bars, things like that. And then what else I have is I have a hand warmer. I have a white water whistle. Okay, this is a Fox 40 whistle, very loud. Okay, if you don't have radio or your radio goes dead, you can blow this and people can hear it from quite a ways away. Spare batteries from my beacon. And I have a headlamp. Okay, this is one by Petzl. It's called the E Light, super lightweight, 10 year shelf life for the battery. If I need to find firewood in the middle of the night, if I need to change a belt in the middle of the night, I have this. Also, it's much easier to find someone with a light source. This has a strobe feature on it. I can turn it on, and it's a flashing light. And if I go into the thick trees, I can leave it on the tree, on the tree line, and search or see a flashing light. I also have a glow stick. Okay. One other thing I carry is a spot. It's a GPS satellite messenger. This is changing mountain rescue. Okay. Three features on this. This used these used to be the personal locator beacons were six to nine hundred dollars. The spot is one hundred and fifty dollars. Where they get you is on the subscription, which is $100 a year for an extra $49. Uh, there's a tracking feature. Okay, three buttons. From, there's an OK button, there's a help button, and an SOS button. With the OK button, I hit that, it sends a text message to up to 12 people, lets them know I'm OK. They can get on Google Earth and figure out exactly where I am. Uh, if I'm out here and I have a mechanical problem, Maybe I break an A-arm, okay, I hit a rock. Is it a 911 situation? No. I can hit the help button, it sends a text message to 12 of my friends, they can have my GPS coordinates, they can get Google Earth and figure out how I got to where I am and they can come right to my location. If there's an avalanche accident or an injury, I can hit the SOS button, it sends a signal to a satellite, to a command center, the command center notifies the nearest mountain rescue group, and we go exactly right to your location. A few other things I carry. Um, one of the things I carry in my tech vest is I have a GPS, okay? Don't rely just on a GPS. You want a map and compass as a backup, and I have that with me also. Right here is my map. Good topo map. I have a compass also. True believer in communication, okay? Um, using a Motorola radio. Microphone right here. If we get separated, I don't even have to take it off. I just squeeze the button and I'm good. I have a beacon here also. In my tunnel bag, a fire starter kit. Um, if you're using an avalanche airbag pack, if you're stuck in an avalanche train or on a hillside, you don't want to have to take off your pack to get your shovel. So if you're carrying an airbag pack, we're carrying two shovels, one in the pack and also one on the sled. I carry a saw. Uh, we usually say we're going to use this uh, if we had to spend the night out to cut firewood. Usually we're using it when we put the sled into a tree well to cut out the sled. I have extra food and I have a fire starter. Okay, this is uh, cotton balls with the, it's the ready light fire puffs. It's magnesium striker. Hit the cotton ball, it has a special ingredient in it, ingredient in it and it'll burn for three minutes and you can start a fire. A uh, couple other things, spare gloves on the sled, sometimes spare goggles. Extra layers go in here, and I'm all set. I can spend the night out. You know, you never know when things are going to go wrong. I've been doing mountain rescue for over 20 years. Um, you see some freak accidents. If you have the gear with you, spending the night out is no problem. If you don't have the gear, um, it could mean the difference between life and death. And it just makes a difference. Hopefully you'll never have to use it. But uh, I've never had to spend the night out, come close a few times. How many of you have been in whiteouts before? You know, what happens when the whiteout lasts three to four days and you can't see nine feet in front of you? How are you gonna get out there? A lot of times it's best just to spend the night out, have a fire, you have the sled there. If searchers are looking for you, you can start up the sled. And if you wake up in the morning, uncover the sled. These bright colors really stand out. If they're looking for you from the air, it makes all the difference in the world having the bright colors.